Last night I took part in a podcast. I never thought I'd get to say that sentence. This podcast, Beauties and Beasties, is uh, hosted by two uh, pest control lads. Uh, Sean Mooney from Killine Pest Control and Alex Wade from Wade Environmental. And the, the subject was the Asian Hornet. They're doing four, a uh, mini-series of four podcasts featuring different uh, beekeepers, different people. And I, I was in the first one and they wanted somebody who'd never actually encountered the Asian Hornet before, um, which is the case with me. I've never even seen one in real life yet. I think that's about to change. But uh, yeah, it was quite interesting actually. Well, very interesting, I enjoyed it. Uh, it seems a strange collaboration, bee men and uh, pest control officers. But having said that, these two lads both keep bees themselves. Um, and who better, who better to be trying to, to control pests than, than uh, people who are involved in the bee world. John uh, contacted me a few weeks ago and, and said he was going to do this series and would I be interested in doing it. And at first I said no, um, not because the, it was pest control, their, their business of pest control, that wasn't the issue. My point was that, that there's so many other people out there who are so much more experienced than the Asian Hornet and they should really talk to them. He then explained that they would be talking to more experienced people later on in the series, but they wanted somebody who'd never encountered it before, uh, just to get an idea on my me, me feelings uh, going forward. So, yeah, it, it was interesting. Um, it was good to do. It, it seems a strange collaboration, beekeepers and pest control officers. The lads both keep bees themselves, they know what they're on about. Um, but I think we, we need more of this sort of collaboration all working together. It's, it's going to be important as we go forward trying to combat this, this damned hornet. Uh, they have approached the NBU and offered the services in, in trying to help destroy some of these nests, um, but um, they didn't get anywhere. I understand why the NBU, National Bee Unit, want to keep everything in-house at the moment. It's early days, they're trying to monitor everything, they want everything done their way uh, and applying all the science behind it. But perhaps going forward, um, when the hornet is accepted to be established, I believe it's established already, but once it's accepted that it is established, uh, the bee unit perhaps won't devote the resources to try to destroy these nests. So some, if some of these pest control lads could be taught how to track and trace the nests, they know how to destroy them, they're, they're uh, very adept at destroying wasps' nests and so forth. Perhaps if they were given a little bit of training in the track and trace and, and being able to locate the nests, then uh, I, I think there's something in it. I think it could be uh, could be advantageous all round. Um, could they possibly be given contracts or to try and destroy these nests? I don't know. I don't know. It's all beyond me, really. But uh, yeah, it was food for thought. Certainly, um, we should never dismiss these things um, without without giving them some some consideration. Here again, just checking them for fondant. Sometimes with these weaker ones, I'll take the crown board off and feed them directly on the top bars of the frames. Uh, this one, look at it, probably didn't need that doing, but uh, it was maybe maybe extra cold when I was here last time, they contracted down, and it possibly, it possibly wouldn't uh, reach the feed holes. Anyway, I'm gonna leave them as they are, I'm gonna give them another block of fondant. Um, they could probably do with it, the crown board putting that back on properly, really. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll leave them there. Give them another block of fondant. Happy last strips there. Go, go. Clear a bit of space. Keep them going. Just looking at some uh, winter sown beans here, field beans. Um, could be glad of these this year. Field beans, because they've been direct drilled. This was grass. The grass has been sprayed off and the, uh, the beans drilled directly into it. So that's going to be handy. The bees are just there. Ideal. I think, I think this is linseed. Direct drill again, stubble still there. No plough, straight in the ground as it was left by the combine. And I think this is linseed. 
no use to the bees. But, uh, yeah. Another alternative crop. They're all looking for alternatives to wild seed rape, I think. I think the days of wild seed rape are, are numbered. It's a shame. But we've got to adapt. Wild seed rape, also known as canola. Uh, one of the staples of bee farming and honey production in the UK has been really for the last 50 years, well certainly as long as I've been doing this, this job. Um, it sort of came in in a big way, I think in the late 60s, early 70s perhaps. And uh, it's been a, a big part of, of the, uh, the British countryside ever since really. Fields turning yellow in April and May and early June, but perhaps not for a lot longer. Yeah, I think there's no doubt about it. There's gonna be less and less Oil seed rape, canola grown um, in the future. There's, uh, there's two main reasons for that. Uh, farmers are really struggling to get this crop to grow successfully. Since the neonicotinoids were banned, um, they don't really have any defence against the cabbage stem flea beetle. The, the rape's sown in July, late July, some of it now early August, middle of August through to early September. Uh, and as the plants come through, uh, the cabbage stem, the, the beetle, the adult beetle jumps on it and chews the leaves and it can totally destroy it. If it manages to grow quickly enough, the Aussie rape can get ahead of the beetle uh, and grow away successfully. And then in spring, it faces another problem. The larva of the beetle get into the stem of the plant uh, and, and eat that. Uh, and they can, again, it can destroy the plant completely. Another reason why this, this crop may be less and less significant for us in the future is the fact that it's um, the, the, the varieties that tend to be grown more and more nowadays are hybrid varieties and they just simply don't give the nectar and pollen that the old-fashioned traditional varieties used to, the conventional varieties as they're called. Um, I've walked up the uh, tram lines, the wheelings in a field, uh, 100 yards perhaps sometimes in flowering oil seed rape, beautiful day and there's not a bee on it. Um, yeah, hybrid varieties, no good. Um, so yeah, things are changing, we'll adapt, we'll have to adapt. Um, in some ways it's maybe not a bad thing. The spring honey we are getting nowadays tends to be a lot darker. Uh, a lot of it's tree honey, I think. Um, possibly better quality. So it, it isn't all bad, but it is, it is a change that we're going to have to uh, adjust to. There's no doubt about it. So, we'll have a close up look. Some of this rape, see how it's faring. This is actually starting to grow away now, it's, it's on the move. I think it's this is set safe. But you can see some of the chavel in there and some of them leaves. Uh, it's a wonder it grows at all, really. Top's taken out of some of these plants that could be by, I suppose, rabbits. Some uh, better grown stuff over here. Taller stuff, we'll have a look at that. Pigeons also, pigeons are a, pigeons love to drop onto this stuff. You can hear the bird scares going off in the background, trying to keep the pigeons off it. But look how that's been chaveled. Yeah. It uh, tends to grow very unevenly as well nowadays. It's difficult to get an even crop. Some of it romps away. Another stuff's barely out of the ground. And the strange thing is, I've known crops planted three or four days apart. And one romps away and is really successful. And another crop, maybe in the next field, just fails completely. It's just such a lottery growing this stuff. It's a brave farmer that puts it in, to be honest, nowadays. Yeah, and very expensive crop to put in as well, they tell me. Uh, so, not only is it a gamble, it's a very, very expensive gamble if it goes wrong. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know whether this is variety is a conventional or a hybrid. Uh, I'll know better if bees just over the way there. Um, I'll know better once it's in flower. 
there is some field beans within reach anywhere and there's trees along it's a fairly wooded area so there could be sycamore and and so on for the bees well established a well established crop of uh, winter beans there yeah they're looking good bees within reach of them so All right. And here we have a crop about as even as any I've seen this year. Yeah. Looks healthy and even this. As I say, a bit of a lottery really. Not much flea beetle damage on the leaves. Of old seed rape here have been absolutely massacred, eaten off almost. But the ability of this crop to bounce back is amazing, it amazes me every year. So, this could well bounce back and be a good crop, but uh, yeah, hard to believe when you look at the state of some of them plants. Watch this with interest. I have bees quite near to here as well, so. But it may all be irrelevant. If it's if it's a hybrid variety, they probably won't bother with it anyway, so. But we'll see, we'll see. Just have a quick look inside the uh, Yabba prod trap. Nope. Looks to be empty. I will take the lid off and just double check. Half a million bricks. Thought I'd better just check from the side first. Don't open this up and have a hornet fly out. Uh, nothing. No, empty. Yeah, well, we'll keep an eye on it. Just setting up the other. Uh, I'm just on setting up the other Yabba Prod Hornet trap. See if there's uh, honeycomb, old brood comb in there with honey in, and there's me uh, sugar beer jam water mix. Tray on over the top. I haven't got any cut up pallets with me today. I forgot to bring them, so I'm just going to set this one up temporarily on top of a hive. It may be the best place to put it. It may be the best place to put them. I don't know. So a bit of plywood over the top of there. Put the metal over the top of it all. Let's see how we get on. Thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed that, please click like and subscribe. Bye for now from Swales Honey in North Yorkshire.